Should I proceed? Hello. Yeah. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Vivek Dave. Uh, I'm a chief critical care specialist uh, at uh, Narayana Multispeciality Hospital, Ahmedabad. Uh, today, uh, we are having a session on uh, uh, IABP, uh, that is intraortic balloon pump, uh, for the nursing perspective and the basic understanding of IABP. So before we proceed, uh, uh, let's have a, a quick uh, uh, questions uh, uh, as far as the basics of IABP is concerned. Uh, like uh, which gas, uh, gas used in IBP? Uh, inflation of IBP causes uh, following accept, and deflation of the IBP causes following accept. These all are the basic questions that I have set over here uh, that we will discuss once the session is over. So now, uh, what is IBP? Uh, see, as far as the nursing perspective is concerned. Uh, uh, um, Many of you have uh, worked in the coronary care unit where uh, uh, you have received uh, uh, post uh, myocardial infarction cardiogenic shock patient in which uh, uh, you need to uh, put balloon pump uh, as a bridge uh, of the therapy and to manage the cardiogenic shock patient. So IBP per se is, uh, it consists of a cylindrical balloon polyethylene that sits in the aorta and uh, counter pulsets. Uh, it actively deflates uh, in systole, increasing forward blood flow by reducing afterload. It actively inflates in diastole, uh, increasing blood flow to the coronary arteries. Uh, helium is the gas that's uh, used in uh, intraortic balloon pump. Uh, it's a low viscosity, allows it to travel quickly through the long connecting tubes. That is the advantage of using uh, helium and it lowers the risk of air embolism. So before we proceed, uh, everyone must have an idea regarding the basics of cardiac cycle. Uh, so these all are the phases of cardiac cycle like atrial systole, uh, isovolumetric uh, uh, contraction, ventricular ejection, isovolumetric relaxation, ventricular feeling and atrial systole. So what our heart uh, does in the, uh, uh, in the body, that uh, in, uh, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava drains the blood uh, from the peripheries, it will uh, goes. It goes to the right ventricle, uh, from the right ventricle to right atrium, and then uh, to the lungs, and then later on from the it's left atrium ventricle. to left ventricle, and through left ventricle, uh, through aorta, it travels uh, all across the system. So this is the basic of uh, cardiac cycle. And what IBP does, uh, so whenever there is a uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy, uh, whenever there is a severe myocardial infarction induced uh, severe LV dysfunction, that is known as cardiogenic shock, when the heart uh, contraction affects, right? So what uh, IBP is doing, it's just uh, opposite to the uh, cardiac cycle and heart is doing. So whenever heart contracts, uh, IBP relaxes and whenever heart relax, IBP inflates, right? So inflation of IBP causes increased coronary perfusion pressure. Uh, it will uh, give rise to increased systemic perfusion pressure. It increases the oxygen supply to both coronary and uh, peripheral tissue. Uh, it increases the baroreceptor response and it eventually decreases the sympathetic stimulation, causing decrease in the heart rate, decreased systemic vascular resistance, and eventually it increases the left ventricular function. So this is what the uh, advantage of uh, inflation of IBP. At the same time, when it deflates, uh, so when it deflates, heart will contract, right? So afterload reduction, uh, and therefore it reduces the myocardial oxygen consumption, uh, reduction in peak systolic pressure, therefore a reduction in uh, LV work, it increases the cardiac output uh, and it eventually improves the ejection fraction. So these all are the effects of uh, uh, intraortic balloon counterpulsation IBP therapy on the following. So as uh, we have mentioned the coronary perfusion, so coronary perfusion will increase. It actually helps uh, the coronaries because whenever there is ischemic cardiomyopathy, there is a blockage right in uh, major uh, coronary arteries so because of that the coronary perfusion it decreases so ibp helps uh, in regaining the coronary perfusion uh, eventually it leads to the uh, increased cardiac output because of all these things it uh, reduces the heart rate so that deflation causes the uh, decrease in the sympathetic stimulation it reduces the heart rate 
At the same time, it reduces the uh, PAWP, that's a wedge pressure, pulmonary arterial wedge pressure. In, in turn, it uh, decreases the systemic vascular resistance. So that is what uh, it actually requires whenever there is a stern or a severe ischemic cardiomyopathy. It decreases the uh, systolic blood pressure, diastolic pressure with balloon inflation. Uh, it increases the end diastolic pressure. Eventually, it causes uh, the reduction, after all reduction, uh, uh, by the deflation of the intraortic balloon pump. Now, uh, uh, these all are the indications. Uh, as uh, you all are knowing that uh, uh, severe ischemic cardiomyopathy, severe LV dysfunction, induced cardiogenic shock is the most common indication. Apart from that, uh, uh, whenever there is a high risk uh, CABG, uh, ventricular failure, uh, weaning from CPB, uh, acute myocardial infarction related complication, refractory angina, in all these things, IBP can be very handy. And what are the contraindications of IBP? So absolute contraindications like aortic wall insufficiency, uh, dissecting aortic aneurysm, and severe aortoiliac occlusive disease. So these all are the absolute contraindication in which uh, you, you should not attempt to put uh, an IBP. And the relative contraindications like end-stage cardiomyopathies, uh, severe atherosclerosis, uh, prosthetic vascular grafts in aorta, uh, aortofemoral grafts, uh, end-stage terminal disease, abdominal aortic aneurysm, and various blood dyscrasias, coagulopathy, severe thrombocytopenia, and all. So uh, this is the kit uh, of uh, IBP, uh, where uh, there is uh, uh, an introducer needle. Uh, you can see uh, the uh, where are various uh, equipments uh, in the kit of IBP, like introducer needle, guide okay. wire, uh, vessel dilators, uh, sheets, uh, different size uh, uh, are available that we will see later on. Gas tubing, 30 ml syringe. Uh, this is the syringe. The 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 of, uh, and arterial pressure. So IBP is a flexible catheter and is inserted into the femoral artery and passed into the descending aorta. Uh, correct positioning is critical in order to avoid blocking of the uh, subclavian carotid or renal arteries. Uh, when inflated, the balloon blocks 85 to 90 percent of aorta and complete occlusion would damage the walls of aorta, RBCs and platelets. So uh, while inserting IABP, this is a very important thing that you need to understand. Uh, that uh, the position of the IBP tip is supposed to be very, very important. So that's why it, it's supposed to be uh, put uh, in the cath lab under the fluoroscopy or else uh, you can uh, confirm the position uh, by doing a chest x-ray after inserting IBP. So these are these all are the components uh, of the conventional catheter. You can see on the, uh, uh, on the screen that uh, uh, this is the proximal and distal marker. This entire is uh, the intraortic balloon pump, and this is the balloon membrane. Uh, this is what we need to inflate, and we need to place it. Uh, this is a gas lumen and inner lumen through which the helium gas will travel. This is a universal sheath seal, uh, suture pads, uh, state guard sleeve, so that uh, the assembly is supposed to be uh, uh, well guarded through that sleeve. It's a Y fitting, uh, extracorporeal tubing uh, that's supposed to be connected with the IBP machine. Uh, this is fiber optic pressure sensor. Uh, that's what uh, it's supposed to be checked. Uh, fiber optic cable, uh, tubing clips, uh, and this is state lock uh, so that we need to fix it. Right. So these all are the uh, uh, IBP conventional catheter components. And uh, various IBP sizing uh, that you can see on the screen, and it depends on the height uh, of the patient. Uh, so if the height is over six feet, uh, then th there will be the 50 cc size of uh, balloon that's supposed to be uh, addressed. Uh, one is uh, five to six, uh, that will be 40 cc, five to 5.4, 34 cc, and less than five feet, that it's 25 cc. So uh, the 50 cc balloons are no longer uh, made by Datascope. So the widely used are 34 cc and 40 cc, right? So uh, the approximate length is 163 to 183 and 152 to 163 centimeter. So uh, that uh, supposed to be uh, uh, well explained and well understood. Uh, I have different IBP sizing. 
I'm in the middle of the session. Uh, I'll talk later on. Uh, now, uh, insertion techniques uh, uh, that you can see on this uh, on the screen. Uh, percutaneous with yeah, surgical yeah. insertion. Uh, this is a femoral artery uh, uh, that you need to puncture. The, the same way that we are uh, 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 doing the invasive uh, blood pressure monitoring. So you need to secure the femoral artery, and through that you need to pass the guide wire. You can see on the very well uh, uh, mentioned that uh, through this uh, femoral artery, uh, the guide wire is going up to the aorta. You can see this is the balloon, right? And uh, inflated uh, balloon. Right, uh, you can see the uh, balloon is inflated over here. And uh, the tip supposed to be just uh, uh, distal to the subclavian artery. This is a subclavian artery. If you are going ahead, it, then it will uh, decrease or hamper the blood flow. Uh, from the aorta to subclavian, right? Uh, so that's why the uh, uh, the position of the tip of the IBP catheter is very essential to confirm. And as the uh, as we have already uh, uh, seen in the previous slide, uh, uh, these all are the components uh, that we have already gone through it. The positioning of the IBP, as I have mentioned, the end of the balloon should be just distal to the takeoff of the left subclavian artery and uh, proximal end. Uh, should be above renal arteries and position should be confirmed by fluoroscopy or chest x-ray. Right? So this is the chest x-ray. Uh, you can see like this uh, second and uh, second to third intercostal space. And this is the balloon you can see on the slide uh, on the screen. This is an inflated uh, balloon and, uh, uh, and uh, this is a deflated one. And this is a tip of the uh, balloon right, IBP, and this is uh, the subclavian artery. So it's supposed to be just distal to the takeoff of the left subclavian artery. And uh, you can see on the screen the, the correct placement of the uh, intraortic balloon pump. You can see in this arrow, this uh, tip of the uh, balloon, as well as these all are the inflated balloon band membrane that you can see. Now, uh, uh, as far as the care of the patient is uh, concerned, this is the most important thing uh, 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 being a nursing perspective that you need to understand uh, because uh, when the balloon pump is there, uh, you need to see certain things like uh, keep the patient supine, head elevation, not more than 30 degree, uh, regular evaluation of the peripheral pulse and urine output and site, of, site for oozing because this is very important. Whenever the whenever you receive the IBP patient post IBP patient from cath lab to ICU, uh, you just uh, need to uh, monitor vigilantly. And the, these the most important thing is the regular evaluation of the peripheral pulse because sometimes it may happen that peripheral arterial circulation may hamper and the patient started having uh, ischemic signs in the lower limb. Uh, involuntary movement supposed to be uh, prevented uh, by uh, uh, keeping the patient restrained in the limb uh, that the IBP uh, is inserted uh, and the no blood sample from the central lumen of IBP. Now, uh, this is the waveform of IBP that you can see. This is a one cardiac cycle and this is unassisted end diastolic pressure unassisted systole and this is diastolic augmentation. So the timing is very, very important. So it refers to the position of uh, inflate and deflate points on the arterial pressure waveform. So proper IBP timing is uh, very important. So inflation occurs at the diacrotic notch and appears as a sharp V that you can see, uh, sharp V. And ideally diastolic augmentation rises above systole and the deflation uh, is occurs just prior to the systolic ejection and results in a reduction in assisted and diastolic pressure. And it results in a reduction in assisted systolic pressure. So this understanding is very important uh, as far as the proper inflation and deflation timing of the uh, balloon pump. And this is the timing assessment. This is, uh, you can see the diacrotic notch and these all are the uh, different wave, A, B, C, D, E, and F. These all are the uh, uh, points that we have mentioned. So what is A? So A is an unassisted end diastolic pressure. Uh, B is unassisted systole. C is IBP inflation. So this is the inflation point and you can see the sharp V after inflation. This is the diastolic augmentation. 
so whenever uh, the patient is on ibp on uh, icu chart you supposed to uh, monitor and write down the ibp augmentation blood pressure right so this is what the diastolic augmentation you can see systolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure mean arterial pressure and the augmented uh, pressure so that uh, all the um, uh, uh, nursing staff those who are monitoring the ibp patient supposed to be uh, monitored and you need to put it on the chart uh, what is the augmented blood pressure and this is the assisted end diastolic pressure this is e is assisted end diastolic pressure and uh, f is assisted systole the same uh, that we have uh, seen in the previous slide i'll just show you over here on assisted end diastolic pressure on assisted systole this is where the point of the ibp inflation and then it leads to augmentation diastolic augmentation and then assisted diastolic and systole right so this is the basic understanding of the waveform of uh, ibp and this is what you can see on the screen of ibp as i have mentioned uh, that uh, systolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure mean arterial pressure and this is what, what the augmented blood pressure right you can see over here previous these two is unassisted unassisted diastolic and unassisted systolic this is what uh, they have mentioned right it's this is unassisted systole so this is what the 102 is unassisted systole and this is the augmented blood pressure it was uh, mentioned over here it has been mentioned here and these all are the assisted uh, you know, diastolic and systolic okay so like this you can uh, see on the screen of ibp machine now the frequency so whenever the patient uh, uh, in severe cardiogenic shock and you have put the patient on ibp so ibp what ibp does ibp will give the adequate rest uh, to the cardiac cycle and to the heart right and uh, uh, at that point of time uh, to begin with there is a frequency of 1 is to 1 right just like we are putting the patient on ventilator we are putting the patient to begin with on an uh, in uh, on an assisted uh, control ventilation and gradually we are weaning right from the assisted control to smv cpap and then tps and all the same way uh, this frequency is supposed to be uh, look after in uh, uh, as far as ibp is concerned so this is 1 is to 1 in which in all uh, cardiac cycle and all the beats uh, the blood uh, the balloon will inflate and deflate and you can see the diastolic augmentation with all the pulse and all the beat right in all the cardiac cycle so this is one cardiac cycle you can see in one is to one there is a continuous diastolic augmentation you can find gradual weaning once the patient it looks like that inotropic requirement has cut down uh, patient is relatively stable uh, you have uh, control the underlying source like you you have done the revascularization and uh, pami and all and then gradually you can start uh, patient uh, uh, weaning uh, from a uh, one is to one to gradual one is to two you can see the one beat has missed and there is a diastolic augmentation then again there is a missed diastolic augmentation this is assisted systole normal uh, waveforms and this is inflation and then the diastolic augmentation so this is 1 is to 2 every second uh, beat uh, there is an inflation and followed by diastolic augmentation this is 1 is to 3 frequency every third beat right you can see that uh, two beats have been missed and on the third beat there is a there is an inflation and followed by uh, diastolic augmentation now the timing error right so whenever there is a, an early inflation you can see the uh, there is no sharp deep uh, over here ideally inflation supposed to be at this point and if there is an early inflation of ibp prior to aortic valve closure so what it uh, lead to it will cause the waveform characteristics this is the typical waveform characteristic of the early inflation and what it leads to that inflation of ibp prior to diacrotic notch and diastolic augmentation encroaches onto systole and so these all are the physiologic effects of early inflation that is a potential premature closure of aortic valve potential increase in uh, left ventricular end diastolic volume increase left ventricular wall stress aortic regurgitation and increase uh, oxygen demand when whenever there is late inflation so inflation of ibp markedly after a closure of aortic valve 
so uh, uh, it will gives rise to inflation of ibp after dichrotic notch absence of sharp v suboptimal diastolic augmentation and this is a suboptimal coronary artery perfusion so that's why uh, the positioning of the uh, balloon pump is very very important if the position of the balloon pump is uh, 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 properly placed uh, like just uh, distal to the subclavian artery and the inflation and deflation are properly addressed then these all things uh, supposed to be uh, well under control and now the early deflation so the premature uh, premature deflation of iib during diastolic phase and this is what the premature deflation it will gives rise to uh, suboptimal diastolic augmentation you can see there is a suboptimal diastolic augmentation uh, assisted end diastolic pressure may be equal to or less than an assisted end diastolic pressure and assisted systolic pressure may rise so this is the early deflation and the physiological effect is suboptimal coronary perfusion potential for retrograde coronary and carotid blood flow and suboptimal after all reduction this is late deflation you can see uh, on the screen uh, and what uh, deflation uh, the timing is after aortic valve has opened and this is the typical waveform characteristics and what it leads to it uh, causes after all reduction is essentially absent increase uh, oxygen consumption myocardial oxygen consumption due to left ventricular ejecting against a greater resistance and ibp may impede left ventricular uh, ejection and increase after load so this is what uh, the physiological effect of uh, a late deflation right now uh, a few technical points that you need to address uh, uh, as far as the ecg is concerned so if there is loose or disconnected ecg lead then you need to check the electrodes lead wire connection uh, whenever there is current type of ecg trigger is not appropriate then you need to change to alternate appropriate ecg trigger uh, if the ecg signal is too small then you need to see the lead selection uh, check electrode placement right uh, if the monitor input disconnected then you need to see that part as well and if the patient's cardiac activity ceased then uh, immediately you need to check the patient for the cardiac activity so these all thing you need to address uh, whenever you have any trigger loss as far as ecg is concerned and if there is arterial pressure related trigger loss so the these all are the po potential uh, causes of it so these all are the important understanding of the troubleshooting part of the ibp machine so whenever there is arterial line damp or disconnected or turned off so you need to check the arterial tracing flush the line check transducer and monitor input and change to ecg trigger the same way that we are mon um, maintain and monitor the invasive arterial line if the heart rate is irregular then you need to change uh, the ecg trigger and uh, always just remember the patient's cardiac activity whenever you find any kind of disturbances or any kind of uh, uh, in, uh, accidental cessation then you need to ch uh, check the patient for cardiac activity and uh, these all are the uh, potential complication vascular balloon related and miscellaneous while putting an ibp so uh, it can uh, give rise to arterial injury or perforation aortic perforation femoral artery thrombosis peripheral embolization femoral vein cannulation related issues uh, accidental uh, limb ischemia as uh, we have mentioned and this is balloon related complication like perforation tear rupture incorrect positioning gas embolization and these all are the miscellaneous complication uh, like uh, hemorrhage infection and entrapment so uh because uh, the balloon is uh, having a very uh, long assembly right so you need to uh, uh, need to have proper idea of what kind of complications uh, while doing procedure and certain complications supposed to be addressed uh, post procedure like uh, you need to check the uh, limb for the ischemia uh, you need to check the urine output properly uh, you need to see the uh, certain uh, parameters like platelet count renal functions and all when the patient is on Uh, balloon and these all are the complications uh, if whenever uh, you have any kind of limb ischemia so assessment is the regular uh, check of the distal pulse uh, color uh, temperature capillary feeling uh, and the prevention is use smallest sheath catheter sized indicated uh, and these all are the risk factor whenever patient having peripheral vascular disease or diabetes these all are the additional risk factor of developing uh, limb ischemia 
and the treatment option is remove sheath and observe for bleeding subcutaneous xylocaine injection for arterial spasm change insertion site to opposite limb and bypass graft femoral artery whenever there is a there is an occlusion the ultimately you need to do the fempo bypass and all uh, whenever there is an excessive bleeding from insertion site uh, you need to observe uh, 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 the hematoma size careful insertion why, how you can prevent the careful insertion technique monitor anticoagulation parameters uh, anticoagulation therapy coag prep uh, uh, profile uh, thrombocytopenia if the patient having uh, so if there is uh, the problem of coag profile or thrombocytopenia then you need to address it before you are proceeding for the uh, balloon insertion and uh, the you need to apply pressure you sometimes you need you can put the sandbag as well right and assure the distal flow and uh, uh, at the last resort is the surgical repair thrombocytopenia as i have mentioned is one of the complication you need to check the platelet count daily uh, avoid excessive heparin and replace platelets uh, whenever required if there is a torrential bleed and the uh, there is a persistent thrombocytopenia then you need to transfuse with uh, prcs uh, fourth is immobility of the balloon catheter so iap uh, not be left immobile in the patient for more than uh, uh, this thing and observation of iap status uh, indicator movement observation of augmentation and the prevention is maintain adequate trigger observe movement of iap iapp status indicator if unable to inflate the iapp with iap inflate and deflate the iap by hand using a syringe and a stop cock once every 3 to 5 minutes you just need to uh, flush it Uh, and you need to uh, deflate and inflate, and uh, having that moment so that the immobility of the balloon catheter can create a problem. If there is balloon leak, so what you need to assess is uh, observe the tubing for blood uh, with or without the presence of a blood detect, uh, low augmentation, and or gas loss or IB IBP catheter alarm. Uh, prevention is do not remove the IBP from its uh, tray until it is ready to be inserted. and if blood is observed in the pneumatic tubing disconnect the balloon from the ibp and notify and remove it so this is what you need to see uh, whenever there is a suspected uh, balloon leak complication infection this is very all uh, this is also very common when whenever there is a uh, uh, unsterile technique or whenever you are in a hurry in uh, and breaching uh, some aseptic uh, precautions then you may need to land up with uh, infection and the, as a, a assessment related you need to observe the insertion site uh, blood culture supposed to be sent and uh, treatment uh, options are antibiotics uh, other uh, next complication is aortic dissection for you for that you need to assess for the pain between uh, shoulder blades daily hematocrit if suspected aortogram may be indicated while insertion ibp over guide wire with fluoroscopic control so that's why a majority of the cases ibp nowadays uh, are supposed to be put under fluoroscopy in the cath lab right and uh, the treatment uh, options are balloon removal and surgical repair and this is one of the nasty complication of uh, ibp insertion that is aortic uh, uh, dissection right uh, compartment syndrome uh, may develop after ibp uh, removal so the observation of the limb for swelling or, and or hardness uh, measure the calf girth uh, how you can prevent is the uh, use the smallest catheter sheath appropriate that's why the size of the balloon is also very important uh, maintain the adequate uh, colloid osmotic pressure and if there is a problem then you need to address it with fasciotomy if necessary now ibp removal so uh, uh, after uh, all these things uh, the last thing that you need to understand is uh, the important of the ibp removal and this is just not like a peripheral vein that uh, you have removed and you have uh, uh, put the dressing uh, you need to uh, take extra precaution uh, while removing the ibp uh, balloon like a check platelets and coagulation profile because uh, it can lead to further oozing bleeding at the site of insertion uh, deflate the balloon completely Uh, when 50 cc syringe you need to attach and completely you need to deflate the balloon and remove the piston inside so there is no negative pressure in the assembly uh, apply manual pressure above and below ibp insertion site remove an alternate pressure to expel uh, any clots apply constant pressure to the insertion site for a minimum of 30 minutes and check distal pulses frequently 
and one more thing that you need to uh, need to remember that uh, bef uh, while you are removing allow a bit of a jet of a uh, blood uh, or bit of a spurt uh, from the femoral artery and then you press it uh, so that it can uh, 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 it can get rid of chances of developing pseudoaneurysm right thanks a lot now we'll just go uh, back to those uh, questions uh, the basic questions that i have framed uh, uh, you you definitely can uh, answer those questions uh, because everything i have covered in uh, 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 the entire topic right so which gas used in ibp like uh, carbon dioxide argon helium and nitric oxide it's uh, helium right because the, that is the advantage of helium gas it can uh, uh, lowers the uh, chances of air embolism as well uh, question 2 is inflation of ibp causes uh, following except like uh, uh, decrease coronary perfusion pressure uh, increase systemic perfusion pressure increase oxygen supply to both the coronary and peripheral tissue and decrease sympathetic stimulation causing decrease heart rate uh, what is the answer anyone from the participants yes hemlata inflation of ibp causes what so inflation of ibp causes following as i have mentioned uh, it increases the systemic uh, perfusion pressure it increases the oxygen supply to both the coronary and peripheral tissue uh, it decreases the sympathetic stimulation causing decreased heart rate so that except is the uh, answer is decrease coronary perfusion pressure because inflation of ibp it increases the coronary perfusion it will not decrease the coronary perfusion right so inflation having the advantage of increase the coronary perfusion increase systemic perfusion pressure increase oxygen supply to both the coronary and peripheral tissue and it decreases the sympathetic stimulation causing decrease the heart rate so these all are the advantages of uh, inflation of ibp now third is uh, deflation of the ibp causes following except like after all reduction increase cardiac output improve ejection fraction and increase in myocardial oxygen consumption right so what is the answer here anyone from the participants attendees so deflation of the ibp causes following except so deflation uh, how it important because deflation of ibp causes a decrease in the afterload it increases the cardiac output uh, it improved the ejection fraction right so the answer is d here because it reduces the consumption okay so this is what you need to understand like inflation and deflation advantages and that's why ibp is supposed to be used as a bridge sometimes as a bridge whenever patients are having severe lv dysfunction you have done angio it uh, suggests you of tvd and patient is posted for bypass so uh, it used as a bridge uh, of therapy and uh, post ischemic cardiomyopathy revascularization it stabilizes the heart and give the adequate support to the heart okay so thanks a lot everyone any questions here this you just need to see this figure so what are the effects of ibp therapy on the following right and this supposed to be remember like it increases the coronary perfusion it increases the cardiac output it decreases the heart heart rate and eventually decreases the after all okay uh, dawal are you there yes sir so i have concluded the session uh, i uh, i haven't seen dr monica here i guess uh, he has left probably uh, because of so she is uh, having some emergency so she had to leave the session yeah it looked like 
so i have covered the uh, uh, entire uh, basic uh, understanding of the iibp right from the uh, uh, cardiac cycle uh, then the indication contraindication uh, the components of the catheter right insertion technique uh, complication and the basic care that uh, supposed to be given to the patient so should i end yes sir okay thanks a lot everyone and thanks uh, iscm for inviting me to to take this uh, step nursing session thanks a lot double